right in the thick of a, a, a dynamic message. I've uh, been getting a lot of feedback uh, concerning how uh, impactful uh, these teachings have been. Uh, and, and one of the things that I know, uh, at least I'll speak for myself, uh, one of the things that, that I know and I believe uh, that has made it so impactful is, is that a lot of times uh, people may have assumed that they didn't have a gift. Uh, and maybe they didn't know that, you know, God uh, endowed them with something. But over the last few weeks, I hope that everyone is coming to the realization uh, that God has gifted you all uh, with some some powerful uh, tools and equipment uh, to thrive and to dominate in life. And so uh, we're going to let our, our speaker uh, come forward uh, as he continues in this message, uh, the spiritual gifts to fulfill the call. Uh, you all know this man, no stranger to, to us, uh, Dr. Timothy Williams, Sr. Uh, of Words of Life Teaching Ministries. Uh, Dr. Tim, good to see you, sir. And you. Uh, I, I yield uh, the mic to you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, let me get us started here. I want to take and um, uh, actually put my presentation up for you and make sure we're, we're doing the right thing here. So I'm going to actually... Share. Okay, I'm not able to share. Um, Dexter, it says uh, the, that you just able to screen sharing. Yeah, give, give, me, give me one second. I, give me some power, man. Give me some power. Yeah, my bad, my bad. There you go. Okay, let's see. Yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. So, uh, what's the best way to do this? I'm gonna do it this way. And then you all tell me when you see my ministry logo. Gotcha. Okay, you don't see me. You see the ministry logo and me in the corner, right? Correct. Okay, great. Good, good, good. So let me pray. Father, we're grateful to you tonight for your word. We're grateful for your truth. We're grateful for the understanding that you're providing to us. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that even as we share and as I teach and as I speak, that you speak to the hearts of your people. It's your desire that they know what they're called to do, what they're gifted to do. And as I explain these things, God, show them, talk to them, speak to them, give them insight, point to them the things, God, that you have purposed in them, that you desire for them. And God, build confidence in them that you have a special thing for them to do and you've gifted them to do it. And God, it is about them fulfilling what they've been designed to do, their purpose and their call. In Jesus' name, thank you for the anointing. There it is. Go. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing to speak your voice and to teach your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You know, we've been on a journey looking at uh, these gifts and callings and how they've been purpose and how they function together. We've been trying to help you understand God's purpose for your life and your callings and your gifting. We want you to understand how they work together to help you fulfill your call. And most of all, we want you to have confidence, okay? Bill, be convinced to be able to take action and begin to function and operate in your gifting. You know, one of the things about gifts, uh, uh, God endows us, which means these endowments. I tell you, I say the anointing is how he endows us with these gifts. He actually anoints us. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. And we're going to look at some scripture later where I'm going to tell you that Jesus was able to do these things, not because he was Jesus and because he was God. He was able to do them because he was anointed. Well, that same anointing, what the anointing does is my definition of anointing is God's presence on flesh that allows flesh, enables flesh to be able to do what it has no ability to do. That is what the anointing is. So God anoints us with these endowments uh, and these gifts so that what we can function is not so much about our natural talents and ability. It is about God's enablement and our ability to be able to use those things. We looked at these scriptures, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up that I might show my power that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. He was talking about uh, Pharaoh here, but I encourage you to apply that to you. God wants to do the same thing. And here's a scripture in 2 Timothy where it says that we are that he has saved us 
called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, our own labor, but according to his own purpose and grace. And that's or grace means gift. So we looked in that, we're looking at the call of God, the purpose of God, and the gift is associated with it. We learned that the gifts and callings of God are without, are without, without repentance. God is not changing his mind. And what God has done, he said, every member, Second 1 Corinthians chapter 12, every member in the body, okay, as it has pleased him, where he puts you and what he's called you to do and what he's purposed you to do and gifted you to do is the only thing that you can leverage that pleases him. Okay, you got to think of anything else that you're doing outside of those things is out of the pleasure of uh, the pleasure zone of God. Okay, so that is what you want to do. You want to get to the point where you're functioning in your life, where you are doing those things that please the Father, like Jesus said. I shared this uh, this voice of God that I heard, this prophetic word that I had in my heart. It says, "My people judge their ability by what they can do; they should judge their ability." by what I can do, and I can do all things. My people judge their abilities by what they know. They should judge their abilities by what I know, and I know all things. My people should judge their abilities by what they believe, because if they can believe, I can do all things in them. See, it's about God. It's not so much about us. All God needs from us is to believe, okay? That makes all things possible to us. So we've been looking at all of these. Uh, uh, we got to the point where we're looking at spiritual gifts. We talked about spiritual talents last time, and I showed you uh, the gifts of the Holy Ghost, but I want to go, and this is where we're going to go through each one of these and help you get an uh, understanding of how each one of them functions, okay? And what I want you to be doing as, you, as you're looking at this is thinking about yourself thinking about and listening to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you about the gift. Because see, he's distributed gifts to every member of the body of Christ. Every member of the body of Christ doesn't have every gift. I believe, like I said last time, although it's not scripturally mentioned this way, but this is what I believe. I believe we have access to every gift for particular for certain situations that come up because the Holy Ghost is there. But I believe also that there's specific gifting that he's given us that are necessary for us to fulfill our individual call and accomplish our purpose. And so we're going to talk about those things tonight. So we're looking at spiritual gifts to fulfill the call, and we're looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I read this to you last week, and there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, okay? These manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. They are for the profit of the body and also for the profit withal, not only for the body, but also for the world. For to one is given the Spirit, by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healings, okay? That should be an S right there. Gifts of healings is plural, is more than one, the multiple, multiple gifts of healing, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all of these work of that one and the self same spirit, dividing or distributing, that's the word, distributing to every man severally, as he will. So all of us have giftings that have been distributed unto us. Now, when you look at this, this is the way I broke those nine gifts up. I actually learned this from Kenneth Hagin. He, uh, um, if you don't have never heard him or listened to him, I listened to him a lot. Even today, I listened to his teaching. Uh, but he broke them up this way. He said, there are three that say something, that reveal something. There are three that say something. And there are three that do something. OK, that puts them in the categories and we want to talk about each one of these categories. OK, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discern the spirit, reveal something, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues, say something and then faith and working of miracles and gifts of healings are the gifts that do something. So let's hop into this, okay? Now, one of the things that this scripture, uh, the gifts of discerning of spirits, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna talk to you about it, then I'm gonna show you scripture where, where it shows up so you can actually see it, where it functions, how it functions. Discerning of spirits means to see into, okay? And the word spirit is just that, 
the spirit or the spirit realm. So this gift gives you the ability to be able to see into the spirit realm. Now, now here's the thing, you know, all Christians have spiritual discernment. OK, but spirit discernment is not discerning of spirit. The other thing, too, is that some people say, well, this discern of spirits allows you to see devils. Right. You're able to discern the spirit of a, a demon or whatever it may be. Eh, not so much. However, it doesn't mean that this gift is not doesn't give you the access to be able to discern a spirit or to see a demon. I'm going to give you an example when that happened with me and how that actually worked. So discerning of spirits doesn't is all Christians have spiritual discernment, which means you can sense things or see into things, not so much visually. With this gift, you actually see or visibly are able to partake and see the spirit, see into the spirit realm. And that's what discerning the spirits is. So when you think about it, this particular passage uh, of scripture kind of gives you uh, 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 where you see this gift in operation. Now, one, you know what? One of the things that people, uh, when it comes to giftings, okay, spiritual giftings, we get kind of, uh, uh, we think the Holy Spirit is, you know, uh, or either God, when these things happen, that, you know, they, um, how I want to say it, that they, um, um, man, how do I want to explain this? Functioning of these gifts, are not abnormal for the spirit, okay? These things are things that are that are available to you. It is, these are, although they're miraculous to us, they're the norm in the spirit realm. That's what I want you to get, that's what I want you to understand. So when we see these things happening, we think, oh boy, that can't happen to me. No, 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 it can't, okay? These things are because you're a spiritual being and these things happen in the spirit realm where we exist. We exist in this realm, we ex exist in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the natural realm. So when you see these things, what I talk to you about them, you know, yes, they are miraculous. Yes, they are uh, uh, exciting for us. But in the spirit realm, this is day to day. This is everything, right? If we lived our life in the spirit, if we lived our life according to our knowledge of the spirit, we would realize that these things are available to us in every situation, in every circumstance of life. Why? Because we're spiritual beings. The reason that they don't work for us is because we don't believe they will. OK, all of these gifts operate by faith. If you don't have any faith in them, they won't work. OK, your gift, your calling, they won't work if you don't have faith in your calling. Look what Jesus said. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. What is he talking about? He's making a declaration of faith in his calling, his gifting. I, you hear me say I'm a prophet and a teacher. Well, is that boasting? No, no, no. That is that is the way the that is the way that you get these gifts to operate. You hear me when I pray. I said, God, I thank you for the anointing to speak your voice and to teach your word. What I am releasing my faith to activate that gift and the giftings that I have. Look at this scripture when it, when you're thinking about discerning spirit. Mark chapter nine, verse four uh, through five. And there appeared on this is when uh, uh, this when they when the uh, disciples were with uh, Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration when they when they most when they saw Jesus with Moses and Elias it says and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses and they were talking with Jesus and Peter answered and said to Jesus Master it is good for us to be here let us make the three tabernacles for for one one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah now look. He thought that they were real people because he saw them the same way he saw Jesus. Now, in another, in another, uh, 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 in one of the other gospels where this is talked about, it said that Jesus, his whole countenance changed, right? He got this glory thing going on. Why? Because he had entered into a spirit realm where he was able to communicate and converse with Moses and Eliza. Well, that is what discerning the spirit does. Discerning the spirit gives you the ability to see into the spirit realm. Let me give you another example in my own personal life. I was believing God for some money. We were, we were, we were getting ready to buy a house and we didn't have a down payment. 
Okay, we were getting ready to purchase a home. We were living in an apartment and I was believing God for that money, man. We had locked in my wife and I, I was laying in my bed. And normally when I'm laying in my bed, I lay on my stomach with my Bible in front of me and I'm sitting there reading or studying and whatever I am, what I like to do it that way in the light. Where behind me was this big, was this big uh, uh, window. OK, we were on the bottom floor in, in, in an apartment in Cincinnati, Ohio. And this window, you know, have some windows that, you know, just up on the wall with this one always went up, went all the way down to the floor so that you could literally, if you wanted to, you could actually lift that window and step out onto the ground outside. Well, all of a sudden I sensed, you know, I don't know if you ever had a situation where you might have, uh, you could be in a room and then somebody walks in, you may not hear, but you can kind of feel their presence. Then you turn and look and they're there, right? You know, well, that's the sense that I had. When I turned and looked at the window, this angel stepped into the window. And he, I call, I, and I, I call him that today. That was my angel. He stepped into the window. I said, man, you're a big fella. I, now, I wasn't afraid of him. It wasn't a fearful thing. He stepped into the window. He was tall. I mean, I had to look up at him. And he had a white robe on with a, with a, with a cord belt around. And if you lifted up his arms like this, then, you know, his, his, uh, his arms kind of, it just kind of went down in a triangle like that. So that when he dropped his arms, you know, then you could see it kind of flow down his side. Well, when I, I got up and I went over to him, he did not say a word. OK, and I stood in front of him. I'm looking up at him because the man, he's a big fella. Right. He's big. And so he reaches out his hand. And I see this stack of money. And then I reach out my hand before him and that money moved from his hand into my hand. And when I looked up, he was gone. There was no money in my hand at that. But well, I couldn't see it. But what he was telling me is that you have the money. Well, over with it took about a week. But within a week's period of time, we had eight to, I think it was eight, I was believing for either eight to $10,000 that just came into our hands. We found money in bank accounts we didn't know about. We had people who paid us that we, you know, that we were expecting. I mean, just in a matter of a week, we had all the money we needed to actually uh, uh, pay our, and actually get into the home that we were trying to buy when we actually moved. The other instance that I've been able to, that, I, that I've had this, and I haven't had it function very much in my life, discern the spirit, but I can tell you the times that I did. My son himself, my son was sick. He was a young boy. I think Tim may have been five or six years old or something, but he had asthma. And we had taken him to the doctor and they sent us home and said, all you can do for him is give him breathing treatment. And so we were giving him breathing treatments. And so he was in the bedroom at the end of the hall. I went in and looked at him when I got home from work. And then he was purple in his eyes. He was breathing hard. His mom had been taking care of him. He had a fever. He was, you know, he, it, just, it just hurt me that my son was that way. And I talked to God about it because it's like, it's not supposed to be this way. And when I, when I turned around and I went, I left and then I came back out, uh, uh, out of the kitchen and went back down the hallway. And as I was walking down the hallway, as you know, if a door is on the left side, I could actually start to see into the room. My son was laying on the bed and there was this, uh, I don't want this monkey like creature right and he did he he was hairy like a monkey he was had a he didn't have a neck his his his, his head kind of like dripped down into his shoulders but then he had these really really long arms and he was sitting on the side of the bed with my son so i looked at him i said first thing i said to him is that you got to go he shook his head like this right i didn't hear anything he just shook his head and i said no get out of my house Right. When I said that, he jumped down onto the floor when he hopped off the bed onto the floor. Then, you know, you could, I could tell that his arms were extremely long. Right. They, they, they were longer than his body so he could walk and drag his hand. So I told him I, I stepped into the room and pointed down the hallway to get out of my house. He walked, stopped and looked back and shook his head. And I'm I'm pointing to the door. Right. I'm running him out of my house. I opened the door. Okay, to the front, my front door. And I told him, I said, you get out of my house. 
Get out of my house in the name of Jesus. I wasn't yelling and screaming in my house. I was just telling him to move. Every time I told him to move, he would take a step. When he stepped out of my house, he ran out to the front yard. I actually went out to the front yard, I mean, on my front porch, and I yelled, get off of my property real loud, right? At that point, he ran off my property, ran over to the other side, and went behind a building. I never saw him anymore. Now, I'm saying this, you know, people say, man, you're crazy. No, no, I'm just telling you what happened. OK, my son was sick and it was it was I was angry about it. OK, because he, he didn't he was supposed to be sick and he was suffering. And I felt like there was nothing I could do. But as soon as I turned around and went back down that hallway, my son was sitting up on the bed. OK, all that blue color and all his breathing was regular. And he said he had eaten for a couple of days. He's the dad. I'm daddy. I'm hungry. I want something to eat. Right. We fed him. And look, he never had that problem again. So look, discerning the spirits. You're, I was able to actually couldn't see it when I walked in there the first time. But what discerning the spirit does, it gives you the ability to discern, to see into the spirit realm. Sometimes, you know, uh, with, with, with spirits like this, that this gift has to operate for you to deal with them and cast them out. What? To have knowledge of them, to know and be able to deal with them the way I did with, dealt with this one. So that is what uh, the discerning of spirits does. It is, it is a gift that allows you to see into the spirit realm, okay, and get information, get knowledge, okay, to accomplish the will of God. Here's the other uh, gift, which is a word of knowledge that reveals something. Okay, the word of knowledge. Now, what? The, notice it says a word. It's not a sentence. Okay, it's not a textbook. It is a word of knowledge. Most of these, the, the word of knowledge is uh, is actually God giving you knowledge or revelation about certain facts in the mind of God about the present and or the past. Okay, it's knowledge that you have uh, uh, that, and it's it's not it's it's not like you get. Uh, um, how I want to say this. It's not like you get this full revelation. You just get a word. Let me give you an example. I was in a restaurant one night and this guy was worried. He was a waiter. He was waiting on us. Man, he was so jovial and he was, a, you know, just really nice. He was a good guy. He was very urgent, you know, in help and taking care of. But when, when he walked up on the table at one instance, I felt this grief. Okay. It's just a a sense, I just sensed a grief associated with him. Now, words of knowledge can come by perception. They can come by vision. You can have a vision about something on the inside of you. See, it. they can come by the voice of God. You will hear a voice of God inside of you, in your mind, you will catch his thought. They come that way, but the way you distinguish them is the content of the information that you get. Well, that sensing that I had about his grief okay, was a word of knowledge. It was knowledge that I had that God was giving me about something that had happened in the present and or the past. Now, look, I didn't go and say, you know, you're grieving. You know, I didn't start. No, 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 I didn't do that. I said, hey, you know what? I really appreciate you. You're doing a good job, you know, but is everything okay? It was just that simple. Is everything okay? He kneeled down and push squatted on the side of that table and he just began to cry, okay? He just began to cry. And I asked him, I said, well, what's going on? Well, that morning he had a young wife that had been married and uh, for just a short period of time and she was pregnant and that morning she had had a miscarriage, right? And he was still coming to work trying to be his Joe yourself, but God gave me a word of knowledge, okay? That And I, I sit him down there and me and him, he sit there and he cried. And I told him, I said, hey, man, I'm sorry about what happened. And I said, that wasn't God's desire for you. But then and all of a sudden I had a prophetic word for him, okay? A prediction for him. I saw his wife with a one, two, three in her arms, just like this. And I told him, I said, you lost this one. I said, but realize that he, that baby's with God. All right. He's caring for him. So, you know, uh, grieve, mourn, but realize that your wife will have another one and another one and another one. OK, that was a prophetic.
prophetic word. It was my prophet's gift functioning. It wasn't a pro it was prophecy because pro all prophecy is edification and comfort. But I spoke a prophetic word to him. What? That he could put his faith in. He looked at me and his eyes were this big. Okay. Because in his mind, they were in a situation where she could not have. He thought they would never have another one. Okay. He knew it. But I said, no, you, you're going to have one. You're going to have two. She's going to have three. You encourage her with that. What? Edification and comfort. But it started with a word of knowledge. Now, here, here's, here's something that, here, here's where Jesus got a word of knowledge. Now, again, we think Jesus knew these things because he was God. No, 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 no. He was a man just like we are. If he had to operate in his gifts, then you know you got to operate in yours. He was anointed with all of the gifts. You see, you'll see all of the gifts functioning in the life of Jesus. So John chapter four, you remember when he met that woman at the well? And Jesus said unto her, go call thy husband and, he, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Then Jesus said this to her, said unto her, thou hast well said, I, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that saith thou truly. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now you say, well, it's, he's a prophet, so this is prophecy. No, 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 this is not prophecy, okay? There's no edification and comfort in this, okay? None at all. He is revealing a word of knowledge to him, to her. Now, prophets have, if you're in a prophet, you're called to be a prophet, then you will have these revelatory gifts function in your ministry, okay? You, me, I have, I have, I have the gift of prophecy. I have the word of knowledge that functions in my ministry. I very rarely get words of wisdom. OK, but I have words of knowledge. They are they're they're just a common thing in my life and in my in my ministry. What? Because I need that gift to fulfill my call as a prophet. So here it is. It is a fact about the present or about the past. OK, that is just simply a word. OK, a, a, a revelation of a word of information that you get at, uh, when you're functioning with this gift of the word of knowledge. That is the way that it works. OK, and look, it comes like I said, there are instances when I might have a word of knowledge that comes to me in a vision. What do you mean a vision that you see in your natural eye? No, no, no. It's something that I may see on the inside of me. Many times when I'm ministering prophetically, then that's that's what I look for. I'll put my hand on a person and start with a, lay my hands on them and start to proceed and see if I have a word of knowledge. And that word of knowledge will one start be, give confirmation to the person when I speak it, but then it also uh, uh, exhorts their faith, okay, when I start to speak to them prophetically. So that is the way the word of knowledge uh, 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 works. Here's another instance with Peter. If you remember when Ananias and Sapphira, okay, they sold that property and kept back that money. Well, this is what Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? How did he know that? You say, well, you know, he was an apostle. You know, he was, he, you know, he was somebody, man. No, no, no. He was a man just like you are, but he had a word of knowledge that gave him insight and information about a fact in the mind of God that relative to the present or relative to the past. That's what a word of knowledge does. Now, a word of wisdom is similar, but typically the revelation, uh, uh, the word of wisdom gives you revelation about God's purpose and his plans that are more futuristic, okay? They're more uh, 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 insight about what is to come. Now, they're not, I wanna say this, they're predictions, but they're not prophecy. Okay, prophecy is more extensive, but here it is with a word of wisdom. It is just a some information, okay, about God's purpose or his plans or something that God wants you to be aware of that's going to happen in the future. Here's a scripture where you see this happen, okay? Now, this one could be a little bit confusing because it involves a prophet, okay, and he uses, he uses, thus saith the Lord. Okay, but uh, thus saith the Holy Ghost, and he tells Paul about something 
a word of wisdom that he has about something that's going to happen to him in the future. Now, let me explain this. Verse 10, and as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Now, remember what I told you. Uh, the prophet's ministry uses, it. a part of their equipment is the word of wisdom or word of knowledge and the gift of prophecy, okay? Every prophet that's called to be a prophet has the gift of prophecy that's functions in their ministry for specific things, but they will either have the word of wisdom and also the word of knowledge. I, I, I rarely have seen uh, 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 prophets that have both of them operate extensively at this, you know, uh, 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 it's either one or the other. So he says, so he said, when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when he heard these things, both we and they at that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Now notice this. Why did you say, Brother Tim, that is future riches. That seemed like prophecy to me. Well, there's no edification in this. There ain't no comfort in this, right? He's not building him up. He's not exhorting him, but he's telling him a fact okay, that's in the mind of God, that is futuristic in its nature. And he's giving him a word, a word of wisdom, okay? That is the way this particular gift works. I hope that helps you. And I'll put some more scriptures up here where you can go and see other accounts where you see this, actually see this in operation. So those are the, uh, those are the gifts that reveal something. Now I want to talk to you about the gifts that say something, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues and give you some insight in how they work. First of all, I mentioned prophecy. The prophetic gift, this, the definition of the gift itself is that it's prediction, scriptural or otherwise, okay? It means to speak for another, or to flow forth, okay. When if you if you if you ever seen a, a true prophet, a real prophet, they'll start with a, 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 some phrasing, okay, or either they'll start me. I'll start with a word of knowledge. I'll speak that word of knowledge, and then it causes the gift of prophecy to begin to flow, and it just flows over and what and what you're speaking for another with a, with a prophet, they're speaking for God. The prophet's ministry, we'll see that later, is that this individual is not just speaking for edification and comfort. They have a ministry of speaking the voice of God, what God speaks to them and wants to say. That's different than prophecy. Prophecy is speaking the heart of God, true enough, but you're not speaking for God when you do, when you have a gift of prophecy, you're speaking words of encouragement that come from God for edification or comfort. So it's spiritual inspired, spiritually inspired speech, okay, or spiritual utterance in a known tongue, okay? Because we're going to talk about tongues and interpretation of tongues in just a minute. But when you're speaking prophecy, your uh, edification is for edification and comfort, and it's actually meant for you to speak in a language that the individual can understand. So watch out, so associated with prophecy. Because you prophesy doesn't make you a prophet, okay? Because you can have a gift of prophecy. This, matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it said, you all can prophesy. You all can speak edification and comfort to one another. But here it is, just because you prophesy doesn't make you a prophet. So if you have a gift of prophecy that's functioning, then you've got to release it. you got to understand whether or not you've been called as a prophet. Matter of fact, I believe you will know that first before the gift of prophecy starts to work. But if you are just have a gift of prophecy, which means you have the ability to exhort, to encourage, right? To speak positive, to uplift an individual. That's what that gift actually does. It's a simple gift of prophecy for edification and comfort. OK, it's foretelling encouragement, encouragement, not foretelling prediction. OK, so that is the way this gift works. Now, uh, here's a here's a scripture. And I, I, it doesn't so much show you prophecy, but I want to show you how this prophecy and the prophet relates. Look at Acts chapter 21 and uh, in, in verse eight. It says the next day when they were of uh, Paul's company uh, departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four, what? Philip the evangelist, the same man had four daughters 
virgins which did prophesy. Notice he didn't say they were prophets. He said they did prophesy, which means they had the simple gift of prophecy and they were able to speak forth encouragement and exhortation to the body. And as we tarried their minidaries, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. So you see the difference there. These daughters could prophesy, but Agabus was a prophet. Now, if you remember, we just read this scripture. Agabus came down and when he got there, this is, this is when he delivered this word of wisdom. He was a prophet that delivered a word of wisdom about Paul's situation uh, when he got ready to go to Jerusalem. I hope you can see that distinction with the gift of prophecy. Now, I want to talk to you about tongues and interpretation of tongues. How much time we got? We're, we're getting close, aren't we? But look, what, what uh, 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 tongues and interpret. Now, this is where we get confused. And I don't have a lot of time to take in and in, in, uh, uh, go into the details of it, but go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It speaks of tongues two ways, okay? It says that he that prayeth with an unknown tongue, and it says you can speak with an unknown tongue, okay? They're two different things. Praying with the unknown tongue is not the same thing as speaking with the unknown tongue and having interpretation of that tongue. Praying with the tongue is just for that. It is for your edification. It is for your, because uh, 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 it said, pray that you might interpret your own language, okay, for your own personal edification. It is also could praying in, in tongue can be used for intercession. We see that in Romans, um, Romans chapter eight. So that is different from this gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. The gift of tongues, the, 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 uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, tongues and interpretation of tongues have a different purpose, okay? Matter of fact, Paul said that if you can speak in tongues, okay, not pray in tongues, but speak in tongues, and unless you interpret, there's no edification, there's no comfort, there's no uh, exhortation, there's no encouragement. So how is it used? It's a sign to the, to the unbeliever. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, go read that chapter, uh, to communicate to those who speak a different language. I'm going to show you that in a minute in Acts chapter 2, okay? And then tongues and interpretation of tongues can also be used to deliver a word of wisdom, it can be used to deliver a word of knowledge. It can be used to deliver prophecy. Now, don't ask me why God does it this way. I don't know, okay? But I'm just telling you what the scriptures show. And then some of this is my experience that I've had when I've seen these gifts work. So here it is that tongues is a spoken language, okay, that cannot be understood, all right? It is an unknown language. And then interpretation of tongues is the translation of that language. Now, let's see this in Acts chapter 2. See what time it is. Okay, let's see this in Acts chapter 2, okay, where it says, uh, and they were all, remember when the Holy Ghost, when they got all filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, after Jesus had told them to wait uh, in Jerusalem, and they were waiting, the scripture said that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave them utterance. So they were being empowered. They were speaking as the as Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heaven. Now, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Now, look, notice this. This didn't happen over just, you know, in an hour. OK, they were dwelling there, these devout men, and they heard about what had happened. And over a period of days, they came together to try to figure this thing out in verse number six. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now, they were speaking in tongues, an unknown tongue, okay? And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue where we were born? Perithians, um, um, uh, uh, Matus, 
uh, Elamites, well, it gives you all the names where these people came. And it said that they all had different languages. They spoke different languages, but they could hear those tongues in their language. Okay. The tongues is the gift. What they experienced was interpretation of tongues. What interpretation of tongues, if you've ever experienced this, what happens is that you, if you're an interpreter, you will hear the tongue, but the tongue will sound to you like English, okay? And it would, the tongue will come forth and then whoever is interpret, it will sound to them like their own language and they're able to speak what they have heard. They actually interpret the tongue. Now, like I said, that, Function can deliver word of wisdom. It can deliver prophecy. It can it can deliver our words of knowledge. Okay, but it's all for exhortation and comfort. The times that I've seen this work in ministry, uh, 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 it actually, you know, we were uh, in the times of worship. All of a sudden, you know, when you're worshiping, praising in church, all of a sudden, a stillness came over the 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 the, the, the congregation. It was so still, so help me. I thought my I could hear my eyelashes when they batted. It was just quiet. The musicians stopped. Everybody got silent. And a person stood up and brought forth this powerful tongue, probably about a minute, two minutes of just speaking in tongues. At that point, the person sit down. Now we're still in the stillness. And another person on the other side of the room got up and begin to exhort, what was he, he doing? It, what was he doing? He was actually interpreting the tongue and he was delivering prophecy, okay? What he was actually saying was speaking for the prophetic word. Now you might say, well, God, why didn't you just have somebody speak that word prophetically? Well, tongues and interpretation of tongue are, is a sign, okay? It, it is a wonder. Okay, that is what God does when he's demonstrating that. Can't you see that even in this situation where they were speaking with the other tongues, all right? And these individuals now could hear what they were saying. Matter of fact, if you read further down in this passage, they said they thought they were drunk, right? Some of them thought that these men were drunk because when they were hearing them, they thought they just spoke gibberish. They did not hear the interpretation. But these other men or other people that were there who were able to hear them in their own tongue were experiencing interpretation and uh, the interpretation of tongues. Okay, that is the way that gift works. Uh, and and, uh, and so those are the gifts that actually say something. All right, so we're coming up. Dexter, I think I've been doing this now for forty-five minutes. So I'm, I'm going to stop here, and we'll talk next week about the gifts that actually do something. Okay, uh, the gift of faith, the working of the miracles, and the gifts of healing. Let me pray for you, Father. I'm grateful to you. You are so good to us in all that you do, in everything that you do. You provide for us. You show us. You teach us. You empower us. I speak empowerment. See, there's the anointing right there. Glory, glory. I activate the gifts. I speak the gifts. In the name of Jesus, I endow you with the gifts. God, I thank you for the ministry to activate your people, to activate the gifts, to reveal the gifts to them. God, that, may, that they might do your will and bring about greatness in this earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that, Dr. Tim. Mm -hmm. um, listen, uh, for those who are with us on uh, Facebook, uh, we continue this conversation well after uh, we uh, conclude on social media. And so if you want to be a part of that, uh, inbox us. We'll make sure you get the information uh, so that you could be a part of that because we're going to enter into a time of uh, Q and A. Uh, and I also want to say uh, we'll be uh, doing our Bible studies for the next few weeks at seven fifteen p.m. Eastern. Uh, so that's why we uh, got a little started a little late today. But uh, Dr. Tim, before we transition into that Q and A. Um, you, you, you hit on some 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 real powerful stuff, and and I think uh, 
you know, I'm gonna I'm save that question for the queue. <laughs> but uh, but but one of the things that uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna ask that in the in the Q and A because okay. it's, it's about about some tandem stuff because okay. I know because you 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 hit on it how you would get a word of knowledge and how it flows in, into prophecy. And, and I know a lot of times when when the Lord is, you know, uh, doing some stuff with me. It's, it's it's in tandem. It's never yeah. like one yeah. thing. It's, yeah. So you know, maybe if if you can kind of highlight how we can recognize how one thing Absolutely. shifts into the next. Absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, with that being said, everybody on Facebook, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing y'all next week, seven fifteen. Take care and God bless. <laughs>